Kuz Zambu and welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. So today, for today's lesson, I have a carbonyl compound and it is very important to know that carbonyl compound is important class of uh, organic compound. Before we just go into our topics, let's see what carbonyl compounds. So carbonyl compounds are the compounds having functional group that is CO. So we usually write a functional group as CO. This is how we write. So whenever we say carbonyl compound, it is a compound having a functional group that is CO. And that is the reason why we actually call it as carbonyl compounds. And aldehydes and ketones are uh, very good examples of carbonyl compound. And for today's lesson, I'll be just talking about aldehyde. Now second is what is aldehyde? So whenever we say aldehyde, it is the derivatives of hydrocarbon in which two hydrogen in which two hydrogen is replaced by one vibrant oxygen. And in aldehyde, the carbonyl group is attached to one alkyl, this is alkyl, alkyl or aryl group and one is attached to hydrogen. So this is very important to know. And you have here a one except for uh, formaldehyde. We write H and H. It is having two hydrogen atom, atom attached to carbonyl compounds. As it is also there in presentation, uh, we have R. So R indicates uh, alkyl group, as I have already explained. So this R actually indicates alkyl group. So here it can be H. So if it is H, we call it as formaldehyde. And if it is CH3, we call it as acetaldehyde and it goes on. Nomenclature of aldehyde. When you are trying to name, whenever we try to name aldehyde, uh, we have two system of naming it. One we call it as common name and other one is IUPAC naming. And here it is very important to know that whenever we give a common naming system or when we uh, give a common name, it is always derived from the name of the acid. For example, acetic acid you have acetic acid, let's say CH3, COOH, this is acetic acid. How we write is acetic acid. So whenever you try to give a, a common name to this, what we do is we replace IC acid with aldehyde. And finally, we name it as acetyl and uh, for second one, if you are trying to come up with a IUPIC naming system, what we do is we simply replace. For example, uh, you have CH3 again, the same thing, CH3, let's say you have CH3 CHO. So what we do is how many carbon you have? You have two carbon, so we give it a root name that is it. So ethane. So from ethane, we replace E with AL, and finally we give it a name that is ethanol. Now, since we have already covered on on the functional group and nomenclature, I would like you all to try this small activity. For this, I will give you 30 seconds to think over an answer for the three questions that are, I have posted here. So you can just uh, look for an answer or think of an answer. Sorry, 30 seconds of time to think over the answers. All right. So. These are the answers. I don't know whether the answers that you have got was correct or was same to that of the answer which I have displayed. Now second very important that we are going to talk about is the preparation. So formaldehyde is prepared by mixing uh, methyl alcohol vapor and air in presence of a catalyst that is copper or silver or it can be also platinized abstrose at a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. So what we happen, happens is when methanol a, is mixed 
with air it simply gives you formaldehyde and water as the product as shown in the presentation again a very important thing that we have to uh, remember about formaldehyde is that it also poses some kind of uh, health problems first one is people exposed to formaldehyde includes irritation of eyes nose and throat and second is that it may cause even occupational asthma and finally the third very important one is carcinogenic in nature formaldehyde is carcinogenic in nature and research was carried out by national cancer institute and it was confirmed or in their research it was clearly revealed that it is very dangerous and causes cancers second is preparation of acetaldehyde now how do we how can we prepare acetaldehyde in lab? So it is simply prepared by oxidation of ethanol. What we do is when we oxidize ethanol in presence of potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid, it will give you acetaldehyde as a product. And the third one is preparation of benzaldehyde. Uh, how is benzaldehyde prepared? Benzaldehyde is prepared by oxidation of toluene by chromium chloride. So how is benzaldehyde prepared? Benzaldehyde is prepared by uh, oxidation of toluene by chromium chloride. So, okay. Uh, so here, when we prepare uh, benzaldehyde, what we do is it is prepared by oxidation of toluene uh, by chromium chloride. So what we write here is uh, toluene that is C6H5 CH3 plus. So in presence of chromium chloride which is actually CrO2Cl, it will give you a complex compound that is C6H5CH and OCrCl2 and OH2. And this further decomposes with water to give benzaldehyde C6H5 uh, CHO and chromium chloride hydroxide two. So just to balance two here and then two here. So this is how we actually prepare benzaldehyde in lab. Now what do you think about the physical properties, uh, physical properties under physical properties, let's see first is the physical state and formaldehyde is in a gaseous form and then aldehydes up to C11 are in liquid state and then higher aldehydes are in solid state and smell, when we talk about the smell or the odor, it is found that lower aldehydes have sharp pungent smell and as the size of the aldehyde increases, it becomes less pungent and more fragrant. And solubility, lower aldehydes up to four carbon atoms such as methanol, ethanol and propanol are soluble in water. Why they are soluble in water is because of the hydrogen bond between polar carbonyl compound and the water molecules. And higher aldehydes are not soluble in water. And it is also important to know that all aldehydes are fairly soluble in organic solvents. What about the boiling point? Now, boiling point of aldehydes are higher as compared to non-polar hydrocarbons and weakly polar ether. It is because of the intermolecular association due to the dipole-dipole interaction of the end of the carbonyl groups. And even if you compare the boiling point of aldehydes with alcohol and carboxylic acid, it is found that the boiling point is much lower. It is having lower boiling point because the dipole-dipole interaction in aldehyde is weaker as compared to hydrogen bonding which is there in alcohol in or in carboxylic acid. And polar nature, uh, aldehydes are polar compounds because carbonyl compounds contain oxygen which is highly electronegative and it causes electron to pull towards itself. So this actually causes polarity. So that's why uh, carbonyl groups are polar in nature. And because of its polar nature, it is having a dipole moment of 2.3 to 2.8. So it is having a dipole moment of 2.3 to 
2.8. And in our day-to-day -day life, uh, you must have uh, experienced the flavor of almonds. It is due to the presence of benzaldehyde. And second is, well, barbecuing meat. Well, barbecuing meat, uh, you must have uh, experienced the flavor. The flavor is also due to the presence of propanol, which we also call, can call it as acrolein. Now, this is a uh, second activity. Uh, I have designed this small uh, MCQ, uh, multiple choice question for you all in order to uh, review whatever you have learned is clear or not. So I have here three questions. I can again give you uh, 30 seconds to think of an answer and then you can uh, just keep it in your mind and then compare with my answer later. Okay. Now let's come to chemical properties. Under chemical properties, I'm going to talk about oxidation, I'm going to talk about reduction, and I'm going to talk about uh, nucleophilic addition reaction. So uh, it is very important to know that whenever aldehyde undergo oxidation, it forms corresponding carboxylic acid. Now first of all, let's see oxidation with uh, potassium uh, dichromate. Uh, which act as a strong oxidizing agent. Aldehyde, when it undergoes oxidation with uh, uh, potassium dichromate, or we can also have, it, have potassium permanganate, so it always undergoes to form carboxylic acid. For example, here you have RCOH. And when it undergoes oxidation, whenever it undergoes oxidation in presence of, in presence of potassium potassium dichromate that is K2 Cr 2 O7 it gives a product that is OH so this is what this is carboxylic acid RCOOH <coughs> oxidation of alcohol so if you oxidize alcohol it will form let's say A so what could be A so A is aldehyde. So whenever we oxidize alcohol, it gives a product that is aldehyde. And on further oxidation of aldehyde, it is very important to know that it will give you product B. What could be product B? So it could be or it is carboxylic acid. Now second is oxidation with tolerance reagent. So whenever uh, aldehyde undergoes oxidation with tolerant reagent if you it will uh, form carboxylic acid which actually reacts with ammonia to form ammonium salt and it also gives you a silver mirror so that is the reason why actually we call this uh, call this as a uh, silver mirror test because uh, it forms a silver mirror in the inner wall of the test tube and that's the reason why we call this as silver mirror test and one thing that you have to remember here is the tolerant reagent is reduced to metallic silver. Okay. So oxidation by failing solution. What is a uh, failing solution? A uh, failing solution is a uh, alkaline solution of uh, cupric ion. And whenever there is an oxidation of aldehyde by failing solution, what happens is aldehyde get oxidized to corresponding carboxylic acid well cupric ion present get reduced to cuprous ion and this actually forms the red ppt of cuprous oxide so you can just see the reaction rcho which is aldehyde in presence of or when it is heated with a felin solution that is cu2 plus ion uh, it results to a formation of red ppt which is actually due to the presence of cuprous oxide now let's talk about the reduction. We reduced aldehyde, uh, it gives alcohol. And when we are using a reducing agent that is sodium borohydride, what happens is aldehyde get reduced in presence of sodium borohydride to uh, alcohol. For an example, acetaldehyde, uh, when it get reduced, 
using sodium borohydride or you can also have a reducing agent that is lithium aluminum hydride so it gets uh, converted to ethyl alcohol or we can also call it as uh, ethanol and then the third one is nucleophilic addition reaction uh, before I just go on with the reaction I would like to talk about what is nucleophilic addition reaction so when you say nucleophilic it is a kind of reaction where a carbonyl com carbon, a carbonyl carbon which is present has actually a deficit of electron. Because it has a deficit of electron, it is highly susceptible to being attracted by cyanide ions. And for that, what happens is that cyanide ion, for example, if, it, if we are considering hydrogen cyanide, cyanide ion will attack carbonyl carbon. And that's why we call it as nucleophilic addition reaction. And in this reaction, what happens is aldehyde, when it reacts with hydrogen cyanide in presence of a strong base, which is sodium hydroxide, or it can be even potassium hydroxide, it forms cyanohydrine. For example, for this one, here you have a, a three-step mechanism. Uh, in first step, what happens is the base, the base removes a proton from hydrogen cyanide to give cyanide ion. So this is hydrogen cyanide. So the base, we have seen that there is sodium hydroxide. So the base or the base which is present will remove the proton from hydrogen cyanide and form a cyanide ion. And in the second step, what happens is that this cyanide ion which is formed will attack the carbonyl carbon, will attack the carbonyl carbon and this will lead to a shift in the bone. And finally what happens is that it forms an anion. And in the third step what happens, the proton from the solvent, so when I say solvent, I am considering it as water. The proton from the solvent usually combines or will combine with anion to give cyanohydrine. So here you have minus, so what happens is this will combine with the proton from the water to give cyanohydrin and this is what this is nucleophilic addition reaction so this leads to formation of uh, for example if you are considering uh, for acetaldehyde so finally the product that is formed will be acetaldehyde cyanohydrin in canazaros reaction aldehyde whenever canazaros reaction takes place uh, it should lack alpha hydrogen or it should, uh, alpha hydrogen should not be present and it undergoes uh, disappropriate reaction uh, when heated with a strong base that is potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide and in Canozaris reaction one half of the aldehyde molecules are oxidized to carboxylic acid and one half of the aldehyde is reduced to alcohol and this is actually known as Canozaris reaction. For an example, you can have uh, in a screen, uh, there it is clearly shown that uh, formaldehyde in presence of sodium hydroxide, it will give you what? It will give you methanol and sodium format. So one is forming carboxylic acid and one is forming alcohol. So this is actually Canizaris reaction. And second is aldol condensation. Uh, it is also uh, a one kind of reaction in which it contains alpha hydrogen. So when we say Canizaris reaction, it lacks alpha hydrogen and when we say aldol condensation, it actually has or it should have an alpha hydrogen atom. And if you again see this reaction, uh, we can clearly see that there is CHO group and OH group attached there. So because it has aldehyde group as well as alcohol group that is present uh, in the reaction or as a product, we, that's why we call it as aldol condensation. Finally, students, I have uh, activity for you all. Uh, so I have actually three questions for you all. I would like to take uh, or I would like you all to explore and try to find answer for all this. Thank you and have a good day. That's all.